everyone welcome back to my channel this is Heidi from my reading life and I'm here today to start a reading blog it is Friday the 13th January 13th and today is the first day of the mid-month book bash the weekend the long weekend that we take every month to try to read a bunch of books uh, try to jumpstart our reading for the month first um, established by Doris over at Aldi Books and I really like this opportunity every month to sort of jumpstart my reading because I very often start off quite slowly in the month and don't get a lot of reading done. So this weekend really helps me get focused on my reading. And I have a long weekend this weekend because Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so I don't have to work. And I have decided because I've had a lot of stressful things going on in my life recently, work has been very stressful. Um, a lot of changes there and my new granddaughter was born on Sunday so that's very exciting and and not stressful but just exciting and you know stuff happening basically uh, so I'm just decided to take this weekend as a low-key focus on reading weekend I don't have any plans really a few family things going on but nothing major and I just basically gonna read um, and that's my goal so let's talk about what I will be reading. So the very first thing that I will be reading, let me see if I can pick it up without uh, falling down here. This is my Kindle and on my Kindle, I am reading Loath to Love You by Allie Hazelwood. This is a collection of three novellas that have been bound up together. Um, and I am buddy reading this with my romance buddy readers, Doris and Katie. And um, I just actually finished the middle novella in this collection, Stuck With You was very cute. Allie Hazelwood definitely has, you know, certain tropes that she's writing, but I think they work really well in novella length. I really like the focus on women in science careers in her books. Um, I love the very funny dialogue that takes place in each of her stories. Um, and I think that the novella length, it really, really works because um, a lot of her books tend to deal with miscommunication between the two main characters and at the novella length that can't go on very long, right? <laughs> so that's good. I'll be working on that this weekend. I'm also buddy reading Mansfield Park with uh, Kim at Middle of the Book March and Joe Smith, commenter extraordinaire on booktube. Um, and this is uh, a book that we've been buddy reading since the beginning of the month and I am on volume three of this book. We've read it, split it up into the three sections, the three volumes. And um, so I am planning to finish this this weekend. That's my goal is to finish Mansfield Park. So I think that I can do that. I am reading this nonfiction book, Why the Dutch Are Different by Ben Coates. And this is sort of a mixture of a travel, of travel writing and history of the Netherlands. Um, and this was a gift from Britta for Christmas because she knows that I am traveling to Europe uh, in the upcoming in upcoming months in 2023. I, I almost forgot that we are in 2023. Um, and so this is to help me prepare for that trip. I am listening to on audiobook uh, Breathless by David Quammen. And I do plan to continue listening to that uh, this weekend. I'm hoping to set up a jigsaw puzzle at some point and work on that. And then the last book I am reading, uh, currently reading, is another ebook, and it's Boys in Oil. And I can't remember the author's name, so I'll put a picture up. Um, and this is one I'm buddy reading with Sean the Book Maniac, and it is a memoir of a young man growing up in North Dakota, I believe, and what it was like to grow up in this very rural um, environment that's, uh, you know, where the economy was based on natural resource extraction and growing growing up as a gay man um, in that environment. So yeah, it's sort of a mixture of writing about uh, that journey of his, his personal journey and also environmental issues. So enjoying that. So those are the books I'll be working on this weekend and I will be vlogging and letting you know how I get on with all these things.
Well, hello, it's Saturday uh, of my mid-month book bash and I have completed Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. And um, this one is an interesting book. It is very much of a different tone than my favorite Jane Austen book, which is Pride and Prejudice. This one is the, the humor and the wit that I expect from a Jane Austen novel is not present in this one. So this is the story of Fanny, who is brought to live with her aunt and uncle when she's 10 years old. Um, her family is quite poor and um, she's one of many children. And so her wealthier aunt and uncle take her in as a ward and raise her in their household. Of course, you know, life is not easy for young Fanny. She is very much treated as the poor relation and not, um, not given a lot of love or kindness. And um, as she grows up, she uh, is quite a quiet and shy child. Um, and we sort of see her childhood and then we get we get introduced to her through this this childhood part of her life. And then she's basically a teenager and her we start to see her relationships with her two older male cousins and her two older female cousins. And um, of course, there's a love interest and I don't really want to get into like everything. But the main central uh, relationship in the story is between Fanny and her older male cousin, Edmund. And um, as they are all young people, when they're teenagers, Fanny is 18 for the bulk of this story. And Edmund's a little bit older than that. Um, some other young people move into the neighborhood and it's the interactions between Fanny's family and this other family, the Crawfords, that is the the main um, conflict in the story. Um, but this is a morality tale, really. It is the story of a very moral, upstanding young woman, Fanny, and her interactions with folks who have less of a strong moral compass than she does. Um, Fanny, of course, is in love with her cousin Edmund, uh, but she is shown attention by other men in this story. And um, it's really... It's a story that deals a lot with women's uh, ability to sort of pursue their own happiness in life. Um, it's, of course, at this time in the early 1800s, the only role for a middle class or upper class young woman was marriage. I mean, that was you were either going to be a spinster and be caretaking somebody in the family or you were going to be married. And really... Um, you know, how you got married and who you got married to was the central um, the central problem facing you when you were a young woman. And so that's what Fanny confronts is like, first of all, she's not raised to think that, that she um, should expect anything special in her life. Um, and that's, she's taken that on board quite strongly. But she's also very judgmental of other people. Like she definitely feels like, a certain people should act a certain kind of way and when they don't she just judges them um and so nobody in this novel is very likable they're all quite flawed people they don't act in very in ways that endear you to them at all um and so you just spend a lot of the novel going these people are just jerks most of them um they're either jerks because they're being mean to other people or they're jerks because they are just too moralistic um and so the enjoyment that you get out of a novel like Pride and Prejudice just isn't there for me with this one. But I think this one has a lot to say about society and about the role of women in society and about expectations and what you can expect. And um, you have to remember that this uh, Jane Austen wrote this book when she was older than when she wrote like Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. Um, and I think her maturity and maybe her cynicism about life is shining through in this book. And I think it's written with a lot of sarcasm and a lot of like sort of eye rolling at the behaviors that people display and what people think are important and what is really important. Um, and so I think this is just sort of a look at English society at this time period in the early 1800s and um, the ridiculousness of it all <laughs> is what it came through to me. Um, so yeah, this is not my favorite Jane Austen, but I am glad that I read it. And it has given me a lot to think about and chew on. Um, and I was buddy reading this with um, 
Joe Smith and Kim from Middle of the Book March. And um, it's been some interesting conversations that we've had about this book and some very differing opinions about this. So um, yeah, fun, very much fun. So glad to have completed that one. Um, that is all I've been working on uh, for the past, you know, since yesterday afternoon. So uh, I don't know what I will pick up next. Um, I think that it is uh, a little after one in the afternoon. It's quite overcast outside and cold. It's like 30, 31 degrees. Um, but I might like get myself geared up and go outside and take a walk because <laughs> I need some fresh air. I feel like I need some fresh air. So that's probably what I'm going to do next. <laughs> It's Monday night, January 16th, and I'm finally coming back on here in person to talk to you a little bit about what, if any, reading I got done during the month book bash. So I have not yet, um, I haven't completed any more books other than the, uh, I finished Mansfield Park way back, whatever day that was that I finished, <laughs> and I talked to you about it. And then, as you could see from the footage that I've been filming, you know, things got busy. We had our grandson here for Sunday and then spent the night Sunday night into today. And so very little reading got done. We've been having quite a bad uh, sleet, freezing rain, snowstorm over the last 24 hours. And so that's been kind of a mess. But I have read a few things and I did want to tell you about them before I close out this vlog. So let's, I apologize for the lighting. It's nighttime. It's dark. It is what it is. So I have been reading this book, Boys and Boys and Oil by Taylor Borby um, with Sean the Book Maniac. We read about 100 pages for this week's check-in. So like the middle third of this book. It is a memoir about Taylor's time growing up gay in North Dakota. So he grew up in a rural area. It's a resource, uh, the economy is based on resource extraction. And he uh, had one sister and his parents and they lived together in this North Dakota area. And it's all about his growing up um, and what his childhood was like. He knew he was different, uh, but he did not um, come out until he was in college. And so what that was like for him. And so this middle third of the book was about his coming out period. And it was 
very upsetting and heartbreaking what happened to him. Um, so yeah, it is a it is a really good memoir. I really enjoy it. There's a lot in here about uh, Taylor went to school for um, he's studying English uh, English literature, I believe. And so his descriptions of his English classes and the books that he's reading and how he's learning to write. Uh, were great, just really fantastic. I really enjoy that part of it, and of course the the personal stuff about his his family and what it was like for him um, to be different in this environment in this culture. It's really heartbreaking, um, and as a parent, I just have a really difficult time with these kind of narratives. I just have a really hard time understanding some of what people have to go through, which doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't want to give anything away if you're interested in reading this. It's very good so far. Like I said, I've only read the first two thirds, so I can't speak for the whole thing, but so far, very much enjoying that. And then the other thing I've been reading this weekend has been this issue of The Atlantic. This is the November, yeah, the November 2022 issue. Um, we, uh, I've been reading, buddy reading this with Britta this weekend. And the cover story, This Is Not Justice, the story of C.J. Rice by Jake Tapper was one of the articles that we read um, about um, this young man, C.J. Uh, C.J. Rice, who was convicted of murder um, and the circumstances around his conviction are just like the evidence just was not there. He had really bad um, court appointed lawyer and just like everything that could go wrong for him and his defense went wrong. And uh, yeah, really heartbreaking story. Really well written. I had no idea Jake Tapper, the CNN um, commentator. <laughs> was a writer, but he is a very good writer. Uh, we also, the, another article we read about um, how museums are reckoning with uh, with racism and how they um, handle personnel issues around that and how uh, black artists are, uh, how their work is shown in these museums and how their work is discussed and who curates that. And it, that was a very interesting article. And then the third article we read was one about Puerto Rico and about the independence movement, which has um, taken new life since the, the most recent two very devastating hurricanes. And that article also, um, let me just tell you the title of that one and the author, Let Puerto Rico Be Free, so you can see it, Let Puerto Rico Be Free by... Jakira Diaz, who is an author in her own right. She has a recently published memoir entitled, I believe, Ordinary Girls. Yeah, Ordinary Girls. So that was also very, uh, very good. Very good summary of the history of Puerto Rico as it relates to um, its takeover by the U.S. and its um, being held as a territory of the U.S. And uh, I thought it was a very good overview of that history and also of the uh you know sort of the the upswell of of people in Puerto Rico um protesting for independence and separation from the United States so very good articles in that i've also picked up and started um my third teddy roosevelt biography this is colonel roosevelt by edmund morris book 3 in his three book biography series and um i only read the first like 30 pages basically the prologue which details Roosevelt's time in Africa right after his presidency when he goes travels to Africa with one of his sons, Kermit, and goes on like a, a year-long safari in Africa. Really great so far, really interesting. Um, and I've also been working on my audiobook um, while I was puzzling. You saw the jigsaw puzzle I was working on. I've also been listening to Breathless, The Scientific Race to Defeat a Deadly Virus by David Quammen. And this is all about the science behind um, the discovery of what bug was the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, and all of that. So, so far, I'm only, I've only just started part three of this book. And so really um, highly engaging and sort of reads at a very fast pace for a, for a very science-oriented book. So I'm enjoying that on audiobook. So that's what I've been working on. Like I said, nothing else completed during this mid-month book bash. And it was a very busy mid-month book, mid book bash. But I did get a little bit of reading done. And I hope to get some more reading done before I go to bed tonight. But I wanted to close the vlog out here. I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. And I will talk to you later.